Manager uh, at Atlassian, and uh, I'm here to talk to you uh, about uh, some tools or well, tools for high-performing teams. Uh, so over the next 30 to 40 minutes, I'm going to give you a high-level overview of all things teams, uh, the challenges that face teams, the traits of high-performing teams, uh, and this should come as no surprise with me being up here, um, how Atlassian products help high-performing teams too. Um, and finally, as a uh, good lead-in for the rest of today's presentations, uh, I'm going to give you a really high-level uh, example of how uh, our products support DevOps and give an example of how uh, actually one of our product teams um, use DevOps and use our products to uh, plan, build, and iterate on features. So if you're not familiar with Atlassian, hopefully you all are today, uh, we were founded uh, in Sydney, Australia back in the early 2000s by our co-founders Mike and Scott. Uh, and their kind of remit was um, they wanted to improve the way people track, uh, track bugs, task uh, tasks, and uh, assign work. Uh, in the 13 years since, we've uh, expanded our reach and focus, and uh, we now build a range of products that help teams organize, discuss, and complete work. And today, uh, we help teams in more than 50,000 companies uh, in every industry improve how they work together, uh, and it's a responsibility we, uh, to this day, continue uh, to care deeply about. As for me, uh, it's a pixelated version of me. Uh, I was born and bred in Sydney, but uh, have called San Francisco home for the last few years. I've been in Alaskan for around five years. Uh, I was previously working uh, and training people on how to use Jira. Um, let me tell you, training people how to use Jira today is much easier than it was seven years ago. Um, and uh, when I'm not on my bike huffing and, puffing, huffing and puffing up a uh, mountain, I'm a product marketing manager and I look after um, Bitbucket, uh, Cloud, Bitbucket Server, and Source Tree in particular. So first things first, um, what is the definition of a team? So a team is defined as a number of persons associated uh, together in work or activity. Uh, and by that I mean through things like sport, work, hobbies, or even humanity's ultimate form of teamwork, family. Um, if you're here to learn how to help your team uh, with their diapers, showers, or homework, this presentation probably isn't the right one for you. I told you I've got really bad jokes in this. Um, at Atlassian, we have an elevated notion of the team. We strongly believe that the sum of all parts are greater than the individual. Uh, we believe nearly all great human achievement is the result of teamwork. Uh, even when we celebrate the lone genius, there are usually teams working hard to make, uh, hard behind the scenes to make great ideas real. So your flight, landing on the moon, the eventual cure for cancer, uh, all advances made only possible uh, by people working together. Uh, it's a belief that has inspired our origins as a company, uh, and we build software for teams. And uh, our mission is really a simple one, to unleash the potential in these teams. So examples of su successful teams can be found everywhere. Um, Michael Jordan, who is considered by many to be one of the greatest individual basketball players of all time, acknowledges that true greatness requires more than just the individual. Um, just have a look at Leicester City winning the uh, English Premier League this year at absurd odds of 5,000 to 1. I'm a big soccer fan, so of course I'm going to throw a reference to, to Leicester City here. Um, they achieved this with a ragtag bunch of players. Um, it's a pretty awesome story. You should definitely read up on it. Um, and they spent a fraction of the cost, I think, Manchester United spent 10 times more than they did this season and managed to, to win. So that's a pretty awesome achievement there. Um, in the aerospace industry, uh, organizations have been helping uh, one another, attempting and succeeding at, at endeavors thought too difficult and complex to achieve. Without the teamwork between SpaceX and NASA, events like the Falcon 9 that you see here landing on a barge at sea uh, may not have been possible. And uh, these small but important advances in the industry could one day lead us to a manned mission on Mars. Uh, and depending on who you ask and the outcome of the election in November, that milestone can't come soon enough. <laughs> I'm going to laugh this time, that's great. Um, the software and technology industry is by no means a stranger to successful teams either. Uh, where individual achievement is lauded, there are teams working behind the scenes to ensure their success. For every Jobs, Gates, and Zuckerberg, uh, there's a Wozniak, Allen, uh, Moskovitz, uh, along, alongside a slew of other people behind the scenes of so many of today's most successful technology companies. So the rapid pace in which software development is, uh, is innovating has meant that uh, the success of teams are more important than ever. So we've talked about the importance of teams, but what's the big deal about software? 
Well, software is eating the world because every company is becoming a software company. And you've heard that phrase before, you've heard software is eating the world many times before as well. Um, but software really has become the truly disruptive force uh, within every industry. Uh, and in order to compete with one another, companies of all shapes and sizes are turning to software to gain a competitive advantage. So you probably wouldn't consider these businesses software first, but they're increasingly just that using software to distinguish themselves in competitive markets. New high-end cars are, are among the most sophisticated machines on the planet, containing 100 million lines of code or more. And compare that to Facebook, which probably has about 60 million, and the Large Hadron Collider, or the LHC, has about 50 million. You know, speaking of the automotive industry, uh, I love Tesla, so I'm going to highlight Tesla here. You know, so Tesla build cars, it's obvious. Um, what's amazing about them, though, is how they've disrupted the uh, automotive industry by creating a whole new ecosystem around its cars and its brand. Um, not only that, they treat their cars just like you would your phone or your computer, uh, receiving over-the-air updates and, uh, that add additional features long after you've driven it off the, uh, the showroom floor. So every company is becoming a software company, and software is helping power innovation, giving us new perspectives, experiences, and changing the way we live and work. More importantly for everyone in this room, um, Software is driving innovation across all of our industries. But while software is accelerating this innovation, it's also putting extra stress uh, on teams to perform. And even without this additional stress, teamwork is hard. Success today demands teams uh, work better, faster, and with increasing quality like never before. Now, while I've given examples of successful and high-performing teams, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that uh, they've needed to overcome in order to be successful. So, in a software development context, you can distill uh, these issues down to four things, or I'd like to anyway. Um, with a bigger focus on involving teams of different disciplines earlier in the development process, uh, communication is vital to ensure everyone is on the same page and not slowing us down as we strive to move faster and with better quality. Um, more so than ever, context switching between all the systems we use to build, ship, and monitor software, uh, particularly in today's DevOps world, uh, can be equal parts noisy, disruptive, and confusing. Today's software development teams are geographically distributed, which can make staying in sync a huge challenge. And time zones aren't the only problem here. Issues like latency when working with your code that's hosted elsewhere in the world can have a massive impact on developer productivity too. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, managing dependencies in a world where we're breaking down our large code bases and having smaller teams own their own code can slow down the development process and add unnecessary complexity. So, these common roadblocks are frustrating for teams and can completely derail uh, productivity in a software development context. Um, but all is not lost. Um, so at Atlassian, we've worked with tens of thousands of software teams over the last 13 years, and uh, we've been able to distill the three key traits uh, embraced by high-performing uh, software teams that we've come across. So number one, they embrace change. Number two, they cultivate collaboration. And three, they balance autonomy with visibility. Uh, let's take a look at each one in a little bit more detail. So number one, or strategy one, embrace change. So what do I mean when I say embrace change? Firstly, it means making necessary and sometimes tough decisions in order to optimize for success. It means being open to new ways of working and always looking to improve your existing processes. High performance teams constantly seek customer feedback that helps inform decision making and roadmap. So embracing change often means priorities can change quickly. This is particularly true in software development, uh, where we're increasingly uh, striving to uncover what our customers' needs are in order pr to provide them with real value for our products. Um, High-performance software teams constantly rebalance changing business goals uh, with the insights they're gathering from uh, customers, building a muscle that allows for rapid iteration and course correction uh, across the product lifecycle. So some of these techniques include um, and we do use these in, at Atlassian, uh, developers spending time on product support. Uh, you can rotate members of the development team on support in order for them to understand how customers use our products uh, and the pain they feel from buggy or poorly implemented features. This approach provides developers with a more holistic view of the uh, uh, entire product experience. You can also measure how your customers use your products. You can do this by running in-product experiments and measuring product usage and behavior. Injecting analytics into product development allow you to, uh, allows you to quickly quantify the value of the, their efforts by measuring adoption and usage. 
uh, and in-product experimentation also allows teams to uh, rapidly innovate and improve features before rolling it out to your uh, entire customer base. And another technique uh, are customer interviews. Uh, it's an oldie but a goodie, but uh, conducting regular customer interviews helps you understand what's working well in a product and where you can improve. So if there is a TLDR on this slide, it's that uh, high-performance teams thrive on constant feedback from their customers. So embracing change also happens from within, and uh, high-performance teams are quick to adopt new technologies to help them increase uh, momentum. Many of you are no doubt familiar with Git and more than likely uh, use it uh, in your day-to-day -day work. Uh, High-performance teams are accelerating their velocity without sacrificing quality by utilizing one of Git's key features, branching. Uh, branching allows developers to work independently on feature development, uh, while others can be confident to continue to push their own features and bug fixes directly to customers. Uh, features like pull requests help promote code reviews as a first-class citizen uh, in your development process, ensuring high code quality as a result. New technologies are also helping high-performance software teams adopt new, better ways of deploying their software. Technologies like Chef and Puppet, which you'll be hearing more about in, in just a little bit, can automate the, your deployment processes. And uh, new pro approaches to software architecture, like microservices, are also helping uh, or making de deployments faster. Developers can deploy small, isolated pieces of functionality versus the entire application, uh, which helps identify and fix specific bugs and deliver uh, functionality faster. So these changes and others allow for the acceleration of development speed without sacrificing quality. Uh, while not every technique will uh, work for every team, the message on this slide is to uh, try not to be shy about trying new concepts and to embrace them instead so that uh, you and your team can move faster. So again, developing a muscle to discover, validate, and embrace change has a profound uh, impact on, teams, on a team's ability to speed up their development pipeline, delivering more value to their customers faster. Strategy two, cultivate collaboration. So, uh, it's important to foster a positive team environment that enables a collaborative approach to development and minimizes distract, uh, distractions. So a truly collaborative culture here um, helps deliver quality software at speed. So, and I'm sorry if you can't really see it because I'm blocking away, um, high performance teams create an environment that encourages developers to write code. Fairly straightforward. Uh, individuals work in different ways and support this diversity and supporting this diversity, I should say, is critical in allowing developers to reach peak productivity and creativity. So there are lots of options and preferences to consider here. Uh, where some teams work on code as individuals, uh, some lean deeply into pair programming, others uh, selectively apply pair programming for more complicated or important tasks. And at Atlassian, um, if you ask every team, every different team and every different product, they've probably got a different way of working. So there's no one-size-fits-all uh, solution that we found yet. So reviewing code is arguably um, just as important as writing code. Uh, like I mentioned before, code review fundamentally helps teams deliver better quality software. Can't be overstated how important uh, differing perspectives can be when working with your code, uh, as well as how helpful it can be to share knowledge about your uh, code base and best pr practices amongst your team too. In terms of cultivating collaboration, high-performing teams gravitate to a culture that emphasizes collaboration between software developers and IT professionals, uh, and, focus, and that focus on software delivery and uh, infrastructure changes. So this mentality is an important part of what makes DevOps great, and of course, it's a big reason why we're all here today. High-performing teams aim to establish a culture and environment where building, testing, and releasing software can happen uh, rapidly, frequently, and more reliably. Collaborative cultures truly flourish when high-performance teams share their successes and projects company-wide uh, beyond their core development team. Sharing wins, fails, and uh, things like that help uh, build broader organizational understanding of projects and helps form a deeper understanding of our customers, our market, uh, and how, the, how our, um, our organizations ourselves actually work. Um, so providing easy access to project updates can streamline collaboration and encourage a truly collaborative organization. High-performing teams systematically share and collaborate and help build organizational understanding. So, a word to the wise, though. A collaborative culture also requires discipline. Having open communication and awareness is key, but when too much noise enters the equation, it can become a little overwhelming. If developers are constantly switching from one context to the next, trying to sort through um, what's important to them versus all the white noise that they're getting, um, it becomes really hard for them to stay focused. 
So high-performing teams use workflow strategies and tooling to stay above the noise and allow individuals to focus on the task at hand. And our third strategy, last but not least, um, what we've learned from thousands of organizations that allow us in is that not all teams are alike. Uh, this next strategy is all about helping teams strike a balance between autonomy and visibility. Uh, it's that fine line between ensuring developers are as productive as possible, but still providing stakeholders the information they need when they need it. So software teams want to work the way that makes the most sense to them. They want the freedom to use the tools they want and the flexibility to adopt the processes they're most familiar with. But all that freedom can come at a price. Visibility, visibility can suffer at scale, and key stakeholders can struggle to track progress with so many disparate tools and processes in place. The problem all teams face is how to balance the needs of everybody involved. How do you provide end-to-end -end visibility without limiting the autonomy of teams? High-performing teams have managed to find ways to strike that balance between autonomy and end-to-end um, -end visibility. They're able to provide a unified view of what teams are doing and how they're doing it, all while still enabling developers to work the way they want. So to kind of recap on those three strategies, um, you want to build that feedback muscle and make appropriate changes uh, where necessary and ex experiment with new processes. You want to create a culture of openness and shared responsibility. And you want to select tools that empowers your team to work the way they want, all the while giving stakeholders the visibility they crave. Now, you're probably thinking, this all sounds great, but none of this is going to happen overnight. Change is difficult. Uh, and you know what, you're right. Um, Changes like this take time and buy-in from everyone involved, uh, and it's often very incremental. Uh, and it's also important to find the right tools to help. Thankfully, I know a little company from Australia that can help. Um, in the interest of, uh, sorry, in the interest of today's theme and focus, I'm going to cover how Atlassian tools help high-performing teams overcome organizational and cultural changes in a DevOps context. Um, so if you're not aware, DevOps is a culture that emphasizes the collaboration between software developers and IT professionals, uh, and there's a real focus on software delivery and infrastructure. Uh, it aims to establish uh, a culture and environment where building, testing, and releasing software can happen rapidly, frequently, and more reliably. So what does a typical DevOps workflow at Atlassian look like? So you plan which features you want to deliver, you start writing your code, and build your software. You run tests and continuous integration. You deploy your software uh, into production. You run and operate it, and you're continuously gathering feedback so you can plan your next release or deploy. Fairly straightforward if you're um, uh, in the DevOps world these days. And on top of all this, there's a layer of collaboration that kind of is critical to the su success of that too. So where do Atlassian's products fit in this process? So Confluence is a terrific product uh, to collect and organize custom feedback. Um, and list your requirements or user stories. You can easily turn these into uh, Jira software issues in one click and start tracking the progress of your issue, uh, your stories, I should say, and epics in your software project. Jira software's tight integration allows you to create branches in Bitbucket for each feature without leaving Jira software. Um, when developers are done coding and kick off the code review process in Bitbucket, it automatically updates the related issue status in Jira software, providing the visibility uh, key stakeholders need in a very automated manner. With uh, continuous integration, you can, you can tie automated builds, tests, and deployments together, and you can prevent that it works in my machine mentality um, and deploy faster, uh, thanks to continuous delivery with Bamboo and its code deploy and Docker cap capabilities. Um, Bamboo's tight integration means you can get full visibility on branches, builds, pull requests, and deployment warnings all within uh, Jira software and the release subsection there. Once you've deployed your code into production, you can track and resolve uh, incidents faster with Jira Service Desk. Uh, you can have complete traceability between Jira Service Desk and Jira Software Tickets, and you can also manage knowledge base articles and any related documentation uh, in Confluence. With Jira Service Desk requests, you can um, provide or capture continuous feedback to your software teams. And of course, last but definitely not least, um, at every step, uh, your teams can collaborate with, uh, using HipChat in real time and swarm on incidents at a moment's notice. So let's see how we can use these tools in a practical context. Um, so earlier this year, I spoke to, when I was in Sydney, it was late last year, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, I'm really bad with French names, Tanguy Croissant, who's a uh, product manager uh, for HipChat based in Sydney, uh, about how his, team's, how his team plans, designs, builds, and ships software or features for HipChat. 
Um, while I'm only going to focus on the product side of things here, um, Tangi actually, uh, with a few other uh, members of his team, ran a webinar uh, maybe about a month ago where they walked through the whole process, including infrastructure and incident management, that definitely recommend you uh, watch a recording of if you have time, and happy to share that with you after this is over too. So for a bit of context, um, the HipChat team. So like many teams today, they're geographically distributed across three major cities and time zones. Um, because dealing with these time zones can be difficult, HipChat is split into teams uh, and they're given relative autonomy. Um, it's all starting to sound a little familiar now. Um, at a global level, all teams agree on objectives and key results. Um, so that might be growing monthly active users or increasing conversion rate for, uh, at, uh, of signups. And just below that, they have initiatives uh, to reach these goals. So uh, in order to grow monthly active users, we might work on a new integration between Jira and HipChat. So it's then down to the individual teams themselves to figure out how they're going to get there. Uh, so for this example, we're going to focus on Tangi and the rest of the team, of his team in Sydney. So the Sydney team uses a full DevOps approach. Um, and again, not everything here is going to apply to you. And if you're interested in adopting a similar approach, we definitely uh, suggest you do so incrementally. Um, but let's see how they, or find out more about how they gather feedback. So the Sydney team listens to user feedback as a team and directly from the source. So it's not just the product manager's responsibility uh, to capture feedback. Uh, every team member participates. So they receive feedback from a number of sources, um, from customers in product via net promoter score surveys, uh, through user voice, or via Jira Service Desk. They also get feedback from social media, because everyone loves uh, to give their opinion there on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and um, from monitoring systems about the overall health of the product, um, and also from systems reporting on metrics like AppDex, which uh, measures performance from the aspect of the user. All this feedback goes into HipChat as uh, uh, individual messages and notifications. So the team uses HipChat to actually triage feedback, and anything noteworthy is actually converted into uh, Jira software tickets, which sit on their untriaged backlog. Uh, and they'll spec them out in Confluence, too. So one such example of noteworthy feedback was a request for better integration between Jira and HipChat to um, add additional context without context switching between the two products. You know, when you paste that link into, uh, and I'm sure you've all seen it now because this is a real feature, uh, when you paste the link to a Jira issue in HipChat, uh, HipChat uh, gives you more information about the issue right in the chat room. So because the team have integrated HipChat with their feedback sources, the whole team can discover user requests as they come in and help shape the backlog. So from there, how does the team plan uh, how they're going to ship their features? Well, each team in HipChat is free to use the methodologies that best suits their style of working. Um, for the Sydney team in particular, they utilize Scrum with weekly sprints. Um, so once a week, the team meets for an hour to go through a demo of what was built in the previous week, a review of the previous sprint, uh, and objectives, objectives, I should say, for the next sprint. And by objectives, I mean not necessarily the uh, atomic issue itself that they want to work on, uh, but more units, of, me, me, more units of work, sorry, um, that are demoable in some shape, way, or form. So uh, that objective might be, we want this feature shipped in production by the end of the next sprint, or we want this fe feature ready for review. So after the planning meeting, developers pick issues in the backlog which help them achieve the objectives discussed in their weekly planning meeting. Um, and again, it's important to note, the team talks about objectives in the meeting, developers pick the issues themselves, um, and they pick issues that they feel are going to help them achieve the uh, aforementioned objectives. So what's great about this approach is everyone is involved in defining the sprint and has buy-in. The weekly sprints mean they can uh, easily measure velocity, and they can very quickly realize when an initiative goes off, um, goes off rails. So for the HipChat team in Sydney, planning and building for the team go hand in, tam hand in hand. So the te team spikes uh, early and often to validate ideas, um, to identify early blockers, and to guesstimate the size of an initiative. And they use t-shirt sizes like um, small, medium, large, and I think they call double XL Godzilla for some reason. Um, the team use uh, these spikes, uh, or innovation weeks, to help them break out of the constant rhythm of sprints. It serves the dual purpose of planning ahead, 
while also giving developers a bit of a break from their, their normal routine. Um, so with the example of that JIRA integration, uh, that feature request, I think that was spiked and considered a size M. So let's look at building and, test and, and testing software. Um, in our opinion, these two kind of go in hand in hand. So the team uses Bitbucket and Git and are heavy users of, users of continuous integration via feature branches. So the typical process looks a little like this. So, so for every small change, they create a branch linked to a JIRA ticket. They make their changes, and the build is configured to run tests on each feature branch. When they're happy with everything, they create a pull request to merge them back to master with a minimum requirement of two reviewers. So the, team, uh, the, the HipChat team in Sydney experimented and found they were much more productive working in this way um, rather than conducting massive code reviews uh, or pairing. Uh, for them, essentially, if you've met the minimum number of reviewers, your builds were green, and you're pretty much good to go. So the master branch is what the team uses to ship to production. Uh, and they want to be able to ship to production at any point in time during the day. Um, so your builds have to be green all the time. Uh, all builds have to pass master. Uh, when it's not, it's tools down and all hands are on deck to fix the build. Um, I mentioned before I'm kind of focusing on the product development side of things. Um, so if you want to dive into the infrastructure side, you might want to um, check out that webinar I mentioned before. So how does the team deploy changes? So an important part of the DevOps culture for the team is ownership and responsibility. In the HipChat team, if you implement a, a feature, you ship and monitor it until you're sure it works as expected. The team responsible for writing a feature is also responsible for running it. Now, this may seem crazy, and for some of, he uh, some of you here, your deployments are much larger. You deploy um, uh, your months between actual deployments themselves. So giving this level of responsibility to every developer might also be frowned upon too. But for this Sydney team and for HipChat, Again, it might be different for Jira or Bitbucket, but for HipChat here and the Sydney team, they found they are much more productive when everyone has a little bit of skin in the game. So for this reason, the Sydney team needed a system to help stay on top of what uh, everyone is doing. And so they used HipChat and built specific HipChat add-ons to help with this process. Uh, on this screen, this add-on lets them lock a particular repository uh, for deployment. Uh, it's pretty much a very simple way to let everyone in that room say, this is mine, don't touch it. So most of the deployment is automated, and the team uses both Chef and Puppet. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, the HipChat team uh, have been working with Puppet to help them move faster uh, and control deployments directly from HipChat rooms. Because of this automation, they're able to deploy very often. Uh, in fact, the HipChat team tends to ship uh, changes to production about roughly up to five times a week, um, or five times a day, I should say, a week, a day. Uh, rather than shipping big things infrequently, uh, using Git and creating feature branches for small changes uh, allows the team to ship small things very often. This helps reduce, uh, for the HipChat team, this helps reduce the number of issues, makes uh, diagnosing issues much easier, and it's very easy to uh, roll back a change. So not all features are created equal. Uh, in some cases, the HipChat team can't cre uh, agree on the best way to tackle a particular problem. Uh, in, the case, uh, in this case, they rely on experiments. They implement variations of specific features and deploy them to different user cohorts. Uh, cohort, a co cohort A would see one version of HipChat, while Cohort B would see a different version at the same time, and the HipChat team on the back end can measure the difference. Um, the team lets the data tell them which version they should keep. So instead of arguing all day about how to implement a feature, they let the data decide instead. Um, for this particular example, uh, the team were trying to figure out what uh, would trigger users to install more add-ons. So the team ran this experiment, and maybe some of you may have seen this. We ran this a little while ago, um, but the experiment group was probably 5% of, uh, yeah, of our user base. Um, and we ran this experiment for about a week and gathered data as a result. And if I'm, I'm not mistaken, it's done reasonably well and will probably be implemented in the not-too-distant not too distant future. All right, so they've shipped a feature, what's next? Well, shipping a feature is just the beginning. The team measures absolutely everything. Every user action translates into anonymous analytic events, which are used to make decisions on how to uh, enhance the, uh, the UX. The team wants to validate that the feature they built meets the needs of their users. If it didn't, and I'll be honest, the data can be a little bit brutal sometimes, um, they'll iterate on it until it does. 
Uh, and they can do that very quickly using the techniques uh, we described earlier. And so that cycle just restarts itself. So that's how the HipChat team in Sydney uses Atlassian tools to help them ship quality features to users fast. And coming back full circle, they've managed to utilize our tools and achieve high performance by building a feedback muscle, relying heavily on user and analytical feedback, and experimenting with new processes and technologies. They've created a culture of openness and shared responsibility, and they've struck a balance of, of empowering the team to work uh, the way they want, uh, all the while giving stakeholders the visibility they crave. And it's pretty much it for me, but I'll leave you with a quote from Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Uh, I hope you found some things to take back to your team to help them become even higher performing uh, than they were before. If not, I apologize, and we can commiserate over a couple of beers after this instead. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.